Hi guys, it's Craig with the Barefoot Forge, and today we're going to work on maintaining uh, the furnace in the Red Bus here. Uh, this bus has a Wabasto Airtop 2000 STC. It's a gasoline-powered furnace. That means it runs on fuel from the gas tank, and it burns it um, safely, um, vents it to the outside, and it runs thermostatically controlled. So when I'm camping in the fall, I can easily enough make it so that I can set the temperature in here to 65, it'll turn itself on and off, and I'll come back to a nice warm car. Apparently you do have to take these things apart and maintain them every now and then, and it's been like three years, so let's, uh, let's dig it's into fantastic. it. fantastic, I love it. It fits under there, that's a carbon monoxide monitor between it, and it fits right under my truck fridge 65 in my Vanagon Westphalia. So we need to take the fridge out, which I've designed to come out very easily, pull this faceplate out, and then we'll have full access to the furnace. Okay, we slid the fridge out, there she is. You got your uh, your intake air here, your output air there. And uh, yeah, let's pull this sucker out and rip her apart, see what's hiding in there. I don't know how okay. to do this. Here it is with all of its uh, accoutrements removed. I did have to take the exhaust and the intake off and then the fuel line. The fuel line, when I took it off, does not drip. That's probably important information to some people. Probably the metering pump stops it. So now we need to separate this portion from that portion and then do the things inside. This was really easy, so I didn't have to explain this because you can do this. Fan off, that was super easy. You just put a little screwdriver in there and then uh, turn it a bit and comes right off. But let's take note of a few things because these one of these guys already came off. So these come off real easy. They go there. This guy here is a little loosey. There, there's four of them. All right, next we're gonna pull this electrical unit off. It gives us many wires, so let's look at the back here. We have blue and blue, brown and brown. Wow, they really color-coded things to screw this up, but blues go up here, browns go here, blacks below them, and yellows below those. So yellows, blacks, browns, four pin, blues. And then uh, this little dude gets creative. Some kind of like case temperature sensor. It's gonna get a little weird, but let's just zoom in on that so we can see how it goes. It was ripper. So apart. this thing just pulled straight up and out. I put a little screwdriver in there to loosen it as I pulled up and it came out as one whole assembly. So that's not too bad. Now we're just gonna remove these little screws to expose the ash tongue. I don't know what that means, but um, it's in there. Let's look at the it. The sticker is pretty darn cool. So when you remove the tape, it de and just leaves the word void all over the place. That is, I, I want some of that. Void must be, uh, must be German. I don't know what that means, but Ashtung turned to void. Okay, with that off, uh, it's important to note that you don't actually have to remove that and you don't have to turn the ash dung into a void. Yeah, just don't do that next time. Um, yeah, you don't need to remove that at all and probably didn't need to remove this blue thing because we end up taking the connections off there. Try not to break this. Um, if you do, it's important that you break it and then uh, I broke it. I don't know. I'll add some glue and then uh, now we just tear into the rest of this crap. I think we should be able to pull these big guys off now. And then okay, magic. Okay, I got all of the electricity hoses out of the way and I took off all of the little star guys. These things suck. Um, this is an important date tag. This was made in the 49th month of 2018. And now that these guys are off, we can pop this open and get into the combustion chamber where the good magic happens. I pop the top and this here is the internal fan. This is the thing that goes round and round. And it's funny, it's the same fan that goes on the outside, so I guess they work at the same speed. That's fascinating. I would have thought there was a separate internal fan. And then in here, we have all of the magic stuff where the the explosions occur. And one of these is the thing that makes the fuel come out, and the other thing is the thing that makes the fuel burn. And then uh, these are important. So we'll take this apart and explore it together. I was it. mostly wrong before. This is the intake side. The nasty bits are below. So I pushed my electricity hoses and their little rubber dudes through the holes. I pull up on this thing. And now we got a loosey-goosey plate here. And in theory, we just disarm this like it's, you know, a thing. Ooh. 
You gotta get this out of there. That's gonna be weird. Give me a second. We did it! It came out. Hey, the thing you have to do is separate this plate from that plate. And then it, it comes out. This is the thing. Yeah, it's pretty gross in there. It's maybe ruined. I don't know. Uh, I'll get some clarification. Maybe we need a new one of those. That looks... It looks more than just dirty. And then in there, there's another thing. Yay! It's just dirty, but look at the chunks of carbon that came out of that thing. Woo! Tangible! We're gonna have to clean it now. I don't know what we clean it with. Okay, you can't really see it. You can see it. There it is. The screen's way cleaner now. I got all that carbon built up off. I just used a paper towel on my finger and did some finger things in the hole there. Got it all shined up. Um, I'm not going to pull the glow plug out. Um, I'll regret that later when it turns out it doesn't work and all I needed to do was pull the glow plug out and it's really dirty. But I don't really know how to do that. I mean, it's probably just this one screw and then it probably slides right out, but I'm not going to do that because it's probably just that one screw. So let's put it all back together and hope it doesn't explode. I was wrong you gotta pull this thing out and it turns out it's totally disgusting and then once you've got that out and it's all nasty look down in here Ooh, that's some carbon more cleaning to do for sure well that's all cleaned up looks pretty good so i guess we just put it back together now and uh hope for the best this was pretty easy like an hour not well, that big a deal. The furnace is back in. I haven't put all the things back on top because we'll see that she fires up properly. I've had this thing for three years. This will be the, the third year, and uh, it's been pretty good. Honestly, it, it runs like a top. It was just starting to give me some running issues, which is why I decided to take it apart and clean it. Looks like that's an every three-year thing. Um, it's been a pretty good unit. I wish it was quieter. I wish I had more adjustability. There are features I think other furnaces have that this one doesn't have, but as a good entry-level machine for what's available on the market today, it's pretty great. Hopefully new things come from other companies soon. But in the meantime, if you want a gasoline furnace that fits in a Vanagon, it's not that hard to maintain. It took three hours total, round trip. Not a big deal. That's an hour a year. Okay, I just turned the knob here on my auxiliary heater control instead of the digital thermostat in the back. And we can hear the fan running, which is purging the combustion chamber of its air and uh, cleaning things out. We can hear it and feel it. Next, we'll hear the fuel pump start to click. Should hear a few clicks. And it might not start on the first try because it might have lost its prime. There we go, I hear the fuel pump going. And then we'll hear this ramp up like a little jet engine. Okay, so it's starting the combustion process. Hear it ramping up. Okay, so it's given it fuel, it's run its air cycle, and we should hear the combustion process begin any second now. There we go. We got combustion, you can hear it. That's the, ah, uh, that's the sound coming out of the muffler. So, the combustion process just started, it, it lit on its second try. Yep, I'm getting some warm air already. We'll just let it run and warm up. I'm gonna let it run for like an hour. The worst thing you can do for these heaters is run them for a short period of time. Here's the sound we hear outside the car. It's it's noticeable. I'll tell you, you wouldn't want to be camped in a tent right here, but it's nice and quiet in the car. You just hear a fan. Oh, that was pretty cool. It was pretty easy. Honestly, that's not too hard a job. I should do that maybe every, maybe every summer. I don't know. I think they get better. I think honestly what happens is once you start building up carbon in there, once you start to have a problem, you get a less reliable combustion process which results in more carbon. So I think to a certain extent, you just need to stay on top of it and then it's fine. Honestly, it was like a three hour job. It's not that big a deal. Um, it cost no dollars and I broke some things.
So probably next time I'd replace some gaskets. I'll probably buy some spare parts, but this thing runs great. It's up, it's running, it's quiet, it's hot. I'm gonna let it run for about an hour and then shut it off. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions about this furnace or thoughts on them, or maybe you've used a different furnace, go ahead and comment below. Tell me things. I like to hear from you. It's my favorite.